Okay, we have a question back here, and then Joe Stanfield, and then Robert Audi. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, if I have good, uh, well understood the story of Oracle, it says that in comparison to other kinds of crafts, the craft of virtue has no specific characterization. So how could we surely affirm the superiority, the superiority of the craft of virtue among the other kinds of craft? Of crafts, sorry. Why Was I positive? Why would moral virtue be a superior craft? Exactly. How could we surely affirm this kind of superiority okay. in comparison to other kinds of crafts? Because at the end, Socrates uh, says just that he has no um, he has no specific characterization. Yeah, I think um, the the reason why moral virtue would be superior among all the crafts for Socrates is because its connection with happiness and leading a good life. So. Uh, the, the overall question that he's concerned is with is what kind of life ought we to lead? And for him, uh, the good life is the happy life, and the good life is the virtuous life as well. Whereas that's not true of any of the other crafts, right? So even if you're an expert flute maker, you don't thereby live the happy life. I mean, you may, but uh, being an expert flute maker doesn't guarantee that you're going to live a, a happy life free of psychic disease as it's characterized in the Gordian. So I think that's what would account for the, the superiority of moral virtue among all the other crafts. Thanks. I, I thought that was a really nice overview of the, of the issue. I, I know this is a philosophical, philosophical forum. But uh, I'm wondering if it's a philosophical issue at all. I mean, just the, the issue of why, why Socrates is put on trial. Um, and, and a couple of things make me think this. One is uh, all of the instances, all of the philosophical citations you mentioned are in Plato, which was, of course, written many years after these events, and maybe, maybe even decades after. And uh, also, I, I doubt any of the 500 or 501 jurors were philosophers. You know, they, they're just you're, you're, uh, hoi ploi in, uh, in Athens. And uh, it seems to me that a, a key thing is, is that series of events with the, the political turmoil, the, the revolution in 411 and then uh, 404, and then, of course, losing the Peloponnesian War. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, 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 I mean, in, in history, revolutions and counter-revolutions are very often accompanied by bloodbaths. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that, that that is probably much more likely the reason that, that Socrates was picked out than his association with, uh, well, Alcibiades, but, but later with, with the members of the 30? and. Uh, but there would have to be some connection between his doctrines and the actions of Alcibiades, Critias, and Carmenides, at least in the mind of the Athenians, right? I mean, he was their teacher, but of course, um, you don't necessarily kill a teacher for whoever happens to be that teacher's student and what that student goes on to do. So for that connection to work, there would have to be some connection, at least in the minds of the Athenians, between the substance of what Socrates would have taught these people and what they, in the end, went on to do. Right? And that's, I think, the political interpretation tries to take that further step. And that is a philosophical question, because we have to then, you know, Plato's dialogues are one of our main evidence for what Soc the historical Socrates might have been up to. And so when we read these texts, we have to wonder, well, to what extent it, are the actions of these people connected to the philosophical views that Socrates may have been teaching them? Of course, he also claims not to have been a teacher in the, in the Apology, right? Because he wants everyone to go through um, the Socratic method himself. So he doesn't want to just state something like virtue is knowledge and then you know have you go home and memorize that he wants you to go through the examination yourself so that you understand why this is this is a, a good position to hold um, so i i mean i i agree with you that um 
that you can't separate these political events that I mentioned um, from the death of Socrates. But I think as philosophers, we want to ask ourselves when we read the Platonic Dialogues, is there a connection between what Critias, Carmenes, and Alcibiades went on to do and what they might have learned by hanging around Socrates? I hope that answers your question. Thanks for that very interesting talk. I may be inviting you to speculate in ways you'd rather not, but it seems to me you gave a plausible explanation of why Socrates didn't escape when invited to do so. Um, it's worse to do injustice than to suffer it, and he'd be doing injustice. But you also noted that he said to know what is right is to do it, to know what is truly good is to do it. So there's a question what he really meant by that. He would have said, I suppose, I can't do it. It would be unjust, and I really know that it would be unjust, so I have to abstain. Mm -hmm. And a related question is this. If you give an interpretation on which it makes sense to say to know uh, what is justice to do it, and it's worse to suffer um, injustice than to do it. Why wouldn't he have thought that the Athenians uh, could be saved from a second injustice? First they wrongly condemn him, then they kill him wrongly, and he could avoid the second injustice by deftly removing himself from the scene. Mm -hmm. Well, because um, then, I mean, in, in a way that might be a noble act on his part, but then if it involves he himself committing an injustice in order to save someone else from committing an injustice. Um, that's ruled out by the doctrine that it's better to suffer an injustice than to commit one yourself. So, okay, so, so no quantification can, regarding how many people are doing an injustice or how bad it is. You simply yeah. take an egoistic point of view and you don't corrupt yourself by doing an injustice. We still don't have a good well, interpretation I mean, though it's, of what it's it is, not, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to call it an egoistic view because he did, at least he takes himself to have devoted his life to try to um, show other people what sort of process they would have to undergo in order to become morally virtuous. So it's not that he's purely thinking about his own psychic health, um, but at this point I think he, if he wants to uphold the suffering and justice is, is better than committing it, he has to subject himself. I to think I can it. see a rationale there. Are you yeah. suggesting that there's a sense in which uh, he couldn't have done uh, what they asked and he should have really said, uh, I can't do it, not it would be an injustice and it would corrupt me? Yeah, I mean, if he perfectly understood uh, that it was the wrong course of action, then the, the denial of Akrasia would, would uh, then it would follow that he would have had to act in accordance with that. But of course he also may deny that he fully grasped, um, I mean he, uh, he believed it, and he believed it strongly enough to go through with it, but he also doesn't attribute to himself knowledge except for the knowledge that uh, he doesn't think he has knowledge. When okay, he well, you're speculating me. usefully. I think you're suggesting yeah. that even to have justified belief that aing would be unjust uh, is to be corrupted by aing, or would entail that you'd be corrupted. I, I think he unjust. takes himself to have a very strong conviction that this would be an unjust course of action. And even though he doesn't claim to himself be a perfect expert when it comes to moral virtue, um, in this case, he didn't exhibit acrasia, so he understood it to a sufficient extent that he acted in accordance with his understanding. 